I'm going to start with a little bit about biosecurity because this is very important and we don't want to be responsible for spreading any pests or diseases. So what is biosecurity? Well, just to remind you, biosecurity is a set of precautions that aims to prevent the introduction and spread of harmful organisms. Biosecurity measures are the practical steps that we can take that are designed to minimise the risks of introducing or spreading pests and diseases. So how do recently arrived pests and diseases get to us? How do they move around and spread once they get here? Well, they can be spread between hundreds of metres or hundreds of miles. Spores or larvae can come in on soil, on vehicles, or plant machinery, tools or even equipment. They can also come in on footwear or clothes and even animals and birds. The movement of infected plant material such as wood, branches and leaves, as well as whole plants, can be important. Some pests or diseases spread on air currents and in mist. Local spread of pests or diseases up to a few hundred metres is possible by rain splash, leaf-to-leaf -leaf contact, the movement of insects, wind and even gravity, and very importantly, tools and equipment. You can minimise the risk by sharing vehicles, leaving vehicles outside a site and walking in, making sure that you stay on stone tracks or paths, visiting suspicious or known infected sites last of all, and always ensuring that your clothing, boots and personal equipment is cleaned before you leave the site. So when might a site be considered a low risk? Well, these might be sites that you visit in dry weather. There would definitely be sites where no known outbreaks or symptoms had been observed. Might include just a single site visit in one day. For low risk sites, you would need to brush off leaf litter and soil from your footwear and clothing and ensure that you walked on tracks or hard standings when making the site visit. For high risk sites, in addition to the steps that I've mentioned already for the low risk sites, you would need to wash your boots thoroughly with water and disinfectant and also ensure that you disinfected your tools. High risk sites might be those where you had to walk through undergrowth, mud and leaf litter. They might include sites where you were taking samples, sites when you had to make multiple visits in one day, or site visits to known infected locations. This illustrates what a comprehensive biosecurity kit would look like. You should have a tough plastic storage box and a supply of clean water, which is approximately 5 litres. You would need a boot tray or bucket in which you could wash your boots, a hard brush to do the scrubbing, and an approved disinfectant such as propeller or clean kill to use after you had washed your boots. Propeller should be stored in a vapour-proof container such as a yachting flare container. You should also have hand sanitizer, wipes and paper towels. Plastic bags and ties are useful to contain clothing or other personal protective equipment which had to be taken off-site for cleaning or disposal. You should also have a pair of gloves and eye protection. It is extremely important to arrive on site with clean boots. You should also leave the site with clean boots. When you've carried out a survey, it's possible that your boots could look like the ones illustrated here, with a lot of mud and leaf litter stuck to the bottom. Therefore, before leaving the site, you would need to return your boots to their immaculate state using the water and brushes that you had brought along. It's also very important to remove the mud with water before you use your disinfectant spray. The disinfectant will only kill fungus or spores when it contacts it directly. It will not work through mud. It's also worth pointing out in these slides, you can see that the boot cleaning is taking place on a hard surface. This is a good idea, as any water which may contain spores or infectious material will be tipped out onto this hard surface and will evaporate 
hopefully in the sunlight. You should clean your tools by removing any excess debris and then spraying them with disinfectant. You should also clean your own hands with antibacterial hand sanitizer.